Hey guys, Report Rockstar here. Today we're going to talk about the file system object in VBA that we can use to interact with the Windows file structure. I had an example on this previously working with the file system object. However, I want to take a look at this again uh, with a different application today. It's really a pretty powerful tool that has saved me a lot of time in various applications. So, trying to get you guys to think and expand your boundaries a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do today is simply pass a variable that is defined here and pass it into a number of other workbooks and a defined file. So, a defined folder. So these are where we're going to pass our variables. These are uh, sample financial statements by department. You can see department 1 through 300. Let me open one up we are going to be passing a value to the option tab cell C3 in each one of these files. It is very important with this example that we use just exactly the same reference in each report for each file. It's always going to be an option tab and it's always going to be pasted into value C or cell C3. So keep that in mind into the green cell here. Green doesn't mean anything, uh, just visual reference, but always in C3. Our report then is on sheet one. Start date pulls from option C3 and then runs. So I'm looking at a JET report. For my example today, I will be using JET reports. If you are familiar with it or you use it, pay definite attention because this is a very simple way to automate the updating of a parameter. This is your parameter section. The only one that we need to define for these reports is your starting date. The rest of it will flow uh, or is predefined so don't worry about the rest of it but our parameter section here and then this is our actual report made by JET. Pretty powerful tool it will connect to a database, a variety of different types of databases and allow you to write a custom report in Excel. It's an Excel add-on you can see up here it populates as JET and then we can build our reports from there. So if you use JET definitely pay attention to this. Uh, I've been in situations where I've ran <clears throat> 80 plus different reports in a folder uh, that took over an hour to do manually by opening up the file, coming into options, updating your date to 1-2004 because our test database uses that date range. Okay, let's refresh this guy. Thinking, 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 done. Okay, great. Save, close. Anyway, you can see how that gets obnoxious and slow very quickly. I'm going to change this back to January uh, for consistency of our demonstration. Great. I'll save that and close it. So our macro is going to come in, open those files, each one at a time, I'll populate it with this date entered here, and those are the parameters of the reports, refresh the JET report, which this example can be used for any number of different reasons. You might pass a value to each of these files and that might trigger another set of functions or macros. Certainly not specific to JET by any means, but uh, I've used it for JET and so that's why <clears throat> I wanted to demonstrate with it in this particular case. It will pass the value, run the reports, save the reports, close the report, move on to the next until it is incremented through each file in the designated folder. So let's go ahead and run this so you can see what it looks like and then we'll take a look at the code. I assigned the macro to this little button over here just kind of an easy way to do it so I don't have to hit Alt F8. It's kind of more of a user interface for somebody else. I've made a number of these for other individuals so that it makes it simple for them. I've included just a small password field with update so someone doesn't accidentally come in and run this. You'd think that's hard to do, but you never know. So once I hit OK, it's going to just start cycling through that. I did not include the update uh, screen updating uh, shut off in VBA. If you're familiar with that, you know what that means. Um, if not, I turned, I left it off simply because I wanted you to see in the background what's going on. We'll see the screen open up the new report, run with a new date, save, close, etc. So we'll get to kind of watch that happen. It happens quickly, but you can see kind of what's going on. If you're looking to be more efficient, you would of course turn your screen updating off. Look that up if you're not familiar with it. 
uh, it just saves time in, in processing. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this, see what happens. And then we'll talk about it as we look at the code. So, Department 100, boom, it updates the date. <laughs> Looks like I didn't update my date here, so <laughs> it inserted the same date. Anyway, I'm going to do it again now with the new date. And we'll run it again, update. Now we can watch, okay, February 1, February 1, and we're changing our, our files up here. There we go. That looks more like it. Perfect. Success. Now let's talk about the code. Alt 11, F11 will get me in here. I have a number of variables defined. I'll walk through those each as we as we get to them. But this is our password section. This is our file and folders that we have to define for our loop. Our report date is the variable, the date that we're going to pass through. Uh, and then I'm just using WBK instead of typing out workbook. And I'll point that out. The name of our macro is called master. Our report date is defined in this cell by simply saying find worksheet command, which we have here, dot cells, and then this is an offset of rows and columns. So nine rows down, we come to here, and four columns to the right moves us to D9 in this case, and then we're taking that value to 1, 2004 as our report date. Success there. Simple. Now we're doing our <clears throat> input box, or just a, a password. Quick check. If that is not equal to update, typed into the box, then we go to master last line. That just essentially skips, saying go to, so jump to, skipping all this down to our master last line which ends the routine. This part is the timer setup. We saw at the very end a little message box came up and said seven seconds. Um, this is is the message box itself but the, just right here is the timer that actually starts counting uh, the runtime. So this is completely optional but I like to see it just to see how efficient we are being and then the message box pops up here at the very end. So those two lines are completely optional. Then we're going to have to define the folders. This is the file system object where it starts. Uh, before we actually start using that, what you need to do <coughs> is come into reference, tools reference. You need to find the Microsoft scripting runtime reference and check box that. If it's not, then you, <coughs> these guys don't, don't work. So once you have that, hit OK, and then you can start using the file system object reference. Uh, so I'm naming my folder here in this case, and we're defining that as the location of all of our files. This is our directory, and we're saying my file variable is the directory we're saying equal to my folder, which we defined, and with our extension XLS wildcard, so we're defining or grabbing all of the files in that folder. We're making an array, basically. Now we're going to start our loop. So while my file does not equal blank, so we're just going to keep looping. So you have our do, and then this is the end of our loop. So it will repeat everything between these two tags until we've reached the end of the file, or the last file in that folder that we've defined here. Workbook, we're opening it, and we're opening the file name defined by these two variables, my folder, which we defined here, slash my file. Okay, now we're setting the active workbook, or just what we've just opened, equal to WBK, so I don't have to type out active workbook. Kind of being lazy there, not requirement, you could just type active workbook, every time you see WBK. At any rate, let's move on. Set date in report. So now that we found that new workbook open, we're going to go to the option sheet. And this is what I said we have to be very specific about. We have our option sheet, sheet and range C3 select. We move our cursor there, then we're saying active cell, what is there? Input the report date, which we defined up here on top as this cell right here. This part is specific to JET reports. If you're not going to use it for JET reports, then you can get rid of this section. Um, not necessary. 
but this is the piece specific to refreshing our jet reports if you're going to use this for a jet report that is the key to that uh, to kick that off after you've updated your parameter and then we're going to move from option sheet back to the report tab just because the user doesn't want to open it and have to move the tab back over to the report so we'll just do it for them if there's only one tab or something we're going to skip this part with the on air resume next uh, so it doesn't get an error message but we're just saying sheets taking the active sheet which would be option from here and we're going to increment it one and make that the new active sheet so that would be sheet one on all those reports which would be the actual report now we're going to take our workbook we're going to save it then we're going to close it move on to the next file in the folder until we're incremented through each one of those then we're done we get our message box it completed in seven point whatever seconds and end sub so really quite simple again this is not you don't have to use this for a jet report I'm using it for that and it was it's been extremely helpful <clears throat> not only for jet reports but for a number of other options uh, and ideas and solutions that we've come up with but in this case this is what we used and so take note of that and whatever you guys can come up with to use this for be creative because there are unlimited possibilities and time-saving measures and so that's kinda what I'm about is trying to be more efficient and effective and the work that we do. Alright guys, take care. Report Rockstar, signing off. Happy Holidays.